thank you for taking your time um, uh, here here are the, today we are going to talk about the uh, the the apis that the scheduling as a solution uh, provides uh, provides for uh, all the applications that use uh, resource scheduling could uh, it could be field service it could be project service or uh, customer service scheduling as well so <clears throat> When, let's go take a look at the uh, the uh, with the the set of APIs that are currently uh, being supported by uh, uh, URS for scheduling. So the list of public APIs that we currently support for uh, end users to use are uh, um, uh, a set of them. One is the resource availability for single resource requirements. So when you have a single resource requirement or a work order where you would need uh, one resource to fulfill the job, you could use this API MS Dine search resource availability as an API to make a call and see the available time slots for the you know, for the resources in your organization. So this is the API that we are going to dive in deep uh, today and uh, have a quick demo and uh, show how the API input is and how the results are going to look like. Similarly, when we have uh, requirement groups or multi resource requirements, for example, when your work order needs more than one person to accomplish a certain job or a task, then you would need a requirement group. You could use a requirement group and uh, this is the API that you could use to uh, uh, call in the API and find the available time slots for the groups of resources that could fulfill your job. Could be uh, one or more than one resource for that uh, job to be done. Now, because of the way the requirement groups work, uh, they are going to be matched against one uh, requirement. When, when you search for available resources, the available resources returned are matched to the underlying requirements of that requirement group. Now, because of that, there is a relationship between how these results are returned and how the bookings have to be created. To simplify that booking creation process, only for requirement groups, we have another API ju just to pass that output of the uh, API to from the available time slots and then create the bookings for the requirement groups. Again, apart from the resource availability, there are certain functions in URS that people uh, have been using the APIs for. Resource work hours is one area where uh, uh, there are certain custom uh, interfaces or experiences for a lot of customers who would want to read their resource work hours. Currently, there is one public API that we have, which is expand calendar to read the work hours of a resource. Along with which we are working on releasing two more public APIs to up to provide or to facilitate cre uh, create, update and delete operations so that customers can have their own custom interface, a canvas app or a custom web app to uh, update their uh, uh, work hours from uh, uh, for their resources. So these two APIs are something that are uh, coming up in the next wave and uh, we'd be working on providing uh, the public documentation for the uh, the customers to use it. And then we have a couple other APIs uh, more focused around the geospatial uh, functionalities like geocoding of an address. If you have uh, uh, if you have a uh, uh, a real address, you could geocode it into uh, coordinates by using the geo MS Dine geocode address API. And uh, we also have retrieve distance matrix. This is essentially the API that is used to calculate the distance and travel for a resource to uh, from point A to point B. It could be the distance between uh, a technician's location to the job location, uh, so on and so forth. So this is current. The, this API is specifically uh, useful when you want your uh, customer or partner to use uh, uh, any other provider other than Bing Maps to make calls to find the distance and travel time calculations. So there, most of us already know that there is support for uh, other map providers like Google or, uh, or uh, SE where you could bring in your own custom map provider and uh, use this API to calculate the distances and travels, travel time. So those are the list of public APIs that we have. But for today's call, we'll be focusing more on the uh, search resource availability for single resource requirements. And I have added a few references into this document, which, which I'll be sharing at the end of this uh, uh, podcast as well, so that in case you need to find these, you could easily uh, find those references. Now, getting into the resource availability API, this is the API uh, where you could pass, uh, pass the details of a requirement, like the 
the demand for a job. Uh, it could be a work order, it could be a requirement, it could be a custom entity that is enabled for scheduling. But you could pass that information, the necessary information of uh, the demand for a, a technician to a job. Then the API would process it and would return the available time slots for those uh, uh, eligible resources and returns them as the output of the API. Now, this API also supports versioning. Just wanted to make a note of it because uh, in case you want to roll back uh, back and forth between different versions of the API to use different parameters, you could use that uh, uh, versioning on this API. So that, that's a good thing. Uh, second, second thing, the, because of the way the signature of the API is where we are passing an uh, uh, entity uh, construct to the input of the API, O data calls are not supported on this API yet. Uh, we are still relying on the SOAP, SOAP API, SOAP endpoint for making calls to this API. This is a known issue that uh, we have raised uh, concerns with the platform team. Uh, we've been working with them. Uh, there is something on the roadmap, but, we, uh, but uh, uh, at this point, we would have to still use a, a SOAP-based API call uh, uh, to, ma to make a call. Uh, it doesn't support the ODT endpoints, which means uh, you can't uh, use it through a web API reference or uh, uh, or directly call uh, call through the web API endpoints. Now, it using this uh, uh, this API, uh, you could the the customers or partners could use custom code and plugins to call the API. You could use JavaScript, C Sharp, Flow, or Logic Apps, uh, etc., so on and so forth to make a call to this API and process that information further and present it on an interface for their end users. Uh, so let's let's get into the input of the API. Uh, this is very uh, simplified version of it, but uh, uh, once we go into the documentation, there are, there are much more details in each of those levels. Uh, this is presented in just a way to show what are the required uh, settings and what are uh, uh, the uh, mandatory uh, uh, inputs that are to be passed with the API. Uh, version of the API is needed to be passed. Uh, it is mandatory, but uh, if it is not passed, a default will be assumed by the API. It would uh, default it to the latest uh, version of the API. Uh, there is a requirement entity. So bas basically, we are constructing a requirement entity and passing it to the API as an input to the API. We'll go more into the details about the requirement uh, 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 entity that we want to construct, that we need to construct when, when Building the API of the building the input of the API, you could also pass the settings like the travel radius and sort order, uh, what whatever we want to pass to the API. So these settings are also supported by the API. You could also pass the resource specifications like uh, resource types, resource preferences, or constraints uh, uh, like uh, must use from resources, preferred resources, uh, etc., so on and so forth to the API for the API to process that information. Now the output of the API again. Uh, this is a very simplified signature. There are much more details uh, uh, in, in the documentation, which I would be sharing after the call, where you could see that uh, uh, the time slots are returned along with uh, the available resources. And uh, uh, if there are any related results, uh, essentially, you know, for an example, uh, to explain related results, if a single resource requirement is passed in as an input and uh, uh, in the available time slot, if a crew is returned, so there are many other resources in the crew who can fulfill that job. So all the other resources of the crew uh, are also returned as related results on that API. And obviously any exception that the API throws will be returned uh, uh, on the uh, API call as well. So let's quickly get into the demo. Let me show a quick setup on what we are going to do. So this is a test requirement where uh, we are going to look for uh, a couple of days of availability for uh, starting from uh, today, 2.24 to uh, two days later. I'm looking for 60 minutes of duration. Effort is one and uh, status is active. We have a skill of robotics, hardware and roles, robotics engineers, so on and so forth. I have a multiple set of resource preferences. Um, Allison and Sherry uh, are must choose from resources. Christy and Clarence are uh, restricted resources. I think I should have used preferred resources because the moment I use must choose from restricted doesn't matter uh, anymore. But just for the sake of the demo, let's let's say we have these resource preferences provided for the resource requirement. I also have a preferred organizational unit. 
Now, when you do it from the UI, when you click on it, uh, you'd be able to see that uh, a schedule board loads up and uh, the schedule board uh, is going to show the results for the availability of the resources. You can see that uh, for the two days, 225 to 226, uh, Sherry and uh, uh, Allison's availability is being shown here and uh, they're being returned as they are available for the whole day and there is one row each for each day of uh, Sherry and uh, Allison. So that's how the UI looks like. Now what I did, uh, what I did for uh, the sake of this demo is uh, I have uh, imported the set of uh, uh, files that are needed to, to run this API. So I have sample files, sample code that I used as web resources. So I have uploaded all these uh, uh, sample resources. All of my code is within uh, sample.js. So I'm just using this JavaScript as a sample code. And I have hard coded this requirement and uh, inputted all the values up here. Uh, th this is a big file. What we have to pay attention to is uh, this this area where we are passing the from date and to date. Uh, from date is set as today, and the to date is set as two days from today, and the remaining duration is set as 60 minutes, or uh, that's the duration that we were looking for, and the effort is set as one. Uh, the version of the API is set to two. Uh, we made changes to the API, so we recommend using uh, uh, version API version two. And then now this part is where we actually de uh, define and build the resource requirement as uh, uh, as an entity. So we build the resource requirement. All the things that are needed on a resource requirement are built here. The time and uh, duration are built here and the resource uh, preferences, etc., so on and so forth are built here. For example, you can see my resource type preferences is uh, 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 are built for two, three, five resources, which is account contact user type of resources that are passed. And uh, uh, the reason I hard coded them is for just for the sake of simplicity of the demo. Uh, when in code, you don't really have to act, uh, have a hard coded value, but you can pass in those uh, uh, choices from the uh, from the user's interface. Uh, and then I built uh, my resource preferences, uh, uh, restricted resources. I added uh, uh, clearance and uh, uh, the other resource. And then I also added the two resources for must choose from resource. Uh, Allison and Sherry are my must choose from resources. So I just took the GUIDs of their uh, bookable resources and I added them as hard coded uh, values up here. And then I also passed in uh, the characteristic or skill of robotics uh, robotics uh, engineer, uh, robotics hardware. And then I also passed in uh, uh, the uh, resource role for a robotics engineer. Uh, at the same time, I commented out territory because I didn't have uh, any territories in my demo. I removed that part of it. I used organizational units. So I used Fabric MUK as my uh, preferred organizational unit. Um, I also set up a couple of uh, uh, settings for uh, this input, which is consider slots with proposed bookings. So if there are any open slots which have proposed bookings, I have uh, considered them as available time and consider slots with less than uh, required capacity as well. So if there is a requirement of uh, uh, one capacity or one resource that is needed from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., and if there is uh, uh, any resource with capacity less than that, like 0.5 or uh, 0.75, then that resource would not be considered as available. So that's another setting we could pass as well. And then the call to the API is made and uh, the time slots, the, the time slots are returned uh, in a way. So let me actually show how it looks like. So I have uploaded all these resources into my uh, organization, hosted them on my organization so I can call them and then uh, see how the output would look like. What I'm going to do is make a call to the API to invoke that JavaScript. I'm going to copy that. So uh, the code has run and the API has written the results. So if I open the uh, browse uh, the debug console, I can see the output of the API because it is written to the console uh, console itself. So in the console, I can see that uh, for Sherry, uh, there is time available for 25th, uh, and then for Allison, there is time available on 25th, uh, Sherry again 26th, and Allison again on 26th. So basically, this is exactly same as what the UI, uh, UI has returned us, uh, just to do a comparison. Uh, on how the output from the API would look like from the output uh, of the UI. 
essentially they are basically the same API calls that are being used by schedule board and schedule assistant uh, as well. So uh, the API uh, actually returns us a lot more information. Like if you see it returns type is equals to off, potential is equals to false and so on and so forth. But the idea is uh, these times all the time slots uh, are returned, which are uh, booked or not available or non working hours are returned. But you can look at uh, just the time slots that are returned as potential is equals to true. Those are the ones that are uh, considered as uh, available time is equals to true for the resource. We just send all the uh, time slot just in case uh, the user has to do something else like finding a time off or uh, or uh, uh, or finding um, uh, non working hours that are different for the resource calendar. So. Uh, as you see, you could see the results that are returned on the UI as, are pretty much same as the re results returned on the uh, API. So saying that, let me go back to our demo quickly. So this is basically how the API input looks like. We passed in a certain set of skills, roles, prefer resource preferences, and organizational units. You could also pass in more values like fulfillment preferences uh, with intervals or uh, um, or uh, or uh, time groups and uh, or, or you could pass territories. All the information that you are passing through the uh, UI that could be configured or uh, configured on the API could also be uh, on the UI could also be passed through the API and get uh, respective results from uh, from the API. Uh, now this is how the uh, the code looks like how we passed in the input. Uh, we passed in the from date to date, and then we passed in the resource constraints, like uh, uh, resource preferences and the resource constraints were passed in in these areas as we show uh, as we have seen on the uh, the the JavaScript itself, and uh, the settings are also passed in here. And the demo outputs pretty much look uh, uh, look the same as uh, as. They align with the results that the UI shows up uh, as pretty much on the console that the API is returning the results on. And I have added the references to the end of the slide deck so that you could use use them. Basically, where you could use these APIs, as as most of our customers have been using these APIs, is uh, on a portal where you could uh, uh, have a self scheduling scenario where you could uh, uh, bring in the inputs from your uh, user and then. Uh, 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 like you could ask for resource preferences or uh, the time preferences from the customer based on which you could uh, pass in those values to the API, return, get the results from the API, and then uh, uh, format them in a way that user can choose uh, the time slots and uh, create a booking for them. Now, I know there is something on the map, roadmap for field service to have a self-service self scheduling, which is also going to use the same API, but in case of customizing uh, the the input slash output from your from that API to to your business scenario, you could do that. You could use this API to make calls and uh, uh, present the data on uh, the end user uh, the screen as required for your business.